Look, the best way to stop the pandemic is with a cure or a vaccine. And tonight, doctors and universities across Canada are preparing to hold the world's biggest clinical trial to determine if the plasma from a COVID-19 survivor's blood can heal other patients. How bad was your case? Not bad. Um, we were really mild. Um, s s short term, minor fever, little, uh, little coughing, headache. I think my biggest symptom was a lethargy. Richard Carl and three members of his family were infected with the coronavirus in late February when they went skiing in Colorado. They were lucky. They were diagnosed early and recovered quickly at home. Now Richard is about to donate his blood to see if the antibodies in his plasma can help cure others battling COVID-19. One could look at you and say maybe you have super blood. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's funny because my cousin in Vancouver points out that my grandmother survived the uh, Spanish flu uh, in Victoria mm. in 1918 and that she always said to the family that she'd never, after the Spanish flu, she was never sick with a cold or the flu again. And we just took it as sort of grandma's tales. Interesting. But he's actually pondering whether or not there is something going on here. Injecting a recovered patient's blood into a sick patient to neutralize a virus is not a new concept. This is a really old therapy that has been used for over 100 years. It was tried in the... Um, Spanish influenza epidemic in 1918. Uh, it's used semi-routinely for exposures to measles, mumps, uh, chicken pox, uh, where we have people that can't be vaccinated, that get exposed, but we use an immunoglobulin concentrate. Um, this is a little different because we don't have an immunoglobulin concentrate because we don't have enough donors yet. So we're using the next best thing, and that's taking plasma from a person that's completely recovered, feeling well, they have strong antibody levels, taking that and putting it into somebody who's not doing well. Smaller trials are being done in other countries like South Korea, the UK and the US, but nothing on the scale of Canada's. 40 hospitals are taking part and every university across the country is stepping up to help. Could this be a game changer in how people recover from this disease and, and helping more people recover? It could be, but we really don't know. So in the previous studies that were done, there were no control groups. We hope that it works. It makes sense that it should work, um, but really until it's formally tested in the clinical trial, we won't know. Testing should begin in about three weeks. Richard is encouraging other survivors like him to donate as well. At some point, this trial is going to need them. Um, and I'm hoping that they will join me and make that donation because there's some chance they're going to save someone's life. It is exciting and doctors have hope. However, here's the downside. They won't know if the treatment actually works until early next year. But if it is proven to be effective, at least the 800 patients who will be given the blood during this trial will benefit.